I'm just going to show you really quick how to set up a dynamic texture button list uh, so that you can programmatically fill a button list or a container with a list of buttons. I just want to quickly review how we can dynamically populate a list of texture buttons from the code. So for this demo, I created a really basic UI scene and in there we just have a control node which has a panel and I named it button container. And inside there, I have this button list, which is a box container with vertically aligned uh, elements. So if we add more buttons, it'll just like kind of stack here. I created a example button though. Like, so normally you could just create a button from the UI here from this editor. Uh, and it's gonna be, we're gonna use a texture button. And cause I wanna be able to put a texture in there and show you like the different uh, modes for that. And the way I'm adding the label to the button is through a rich text label. It just works out really nicely uh, when you're using a texture button. Uh, so this is like the actual setup that we're going to have. And these are the options. And the reason why I did this is because I pre aligned where I want everything to go. Like right now it says like 27, like let's just make this 30 and I'll just make this 25. Uh, just to give it some even numbers and that that's just really just like the layout of it and I, and I wanted to have that predetermined so that when we're coding it out I already know what, what to do and I would actually recommend you guys doing this so before you just jump in and try to you know programmatically set up this list go ahead and just create one example dummy button of, of what you want to actually see so that's all this is going to do here um, so we can probably just turn those off in a minute and just so you know I've imported a couple of uh, textures that are going to be the buttons uh, that we're going to use for the different states and I also added a script here called UI and it's just a really basic script so far. Um, I went ahead and imported and preloaded the three button textures we're going to use just so we can just set up and get done quickly. So the first thing I want to do is just set up some test data. So this data can just be anything from maybe you're showing a list of maps or some options. Maybe you have a turn based game and you just want to show the list of options for the player to select in some list. Uh, let's just look at like creating some test data so that we can build this out. So this is just like a generic list of maps uh, with an ID and then the name of the map. And we're just going to use this test data to populate the uh, the buttons. Once we have our test data, maybe you receive this from a web service call. Let's go ahead and create a function that will actually add the buttons to the list. And what we're going to do here is just we're going to loop through each individual item and just individually add them to the list of buttons. Let's just create the text that we want to show up for the label. And we're basically just going to show uh, the ID of the map with this and the actual name of the map. And we're just going to format it in this way. And again, you guys can format this however you want. So I spelt it wrong, but uh, so I went ahead and corrected that. Uh, so we're just creating a rich text label right here and we set the text to it, of course. And let's just go ahead and create our button. OK, so we've created our label and then we've added the label to the button. And let's go ahead and add that button to our button list over here. All right, great. So now we've got our list of data coming in and we'll loop through each data item and create a label from it, add the label to the button and then add that button to the list here. So I'm going to go ahead and just turn off our examples, our example button and let's let's run it and see what happens. And of course, nothing shows up right here because we don't have any sizes set and this container isn't set up to expand or you know show anything like that. So what we need to do is come back over to our example button and let's look at what we have set for the label. So the label down here, I've got it at 850.80. That's the size, right? So that kind of fits the texture that I'm using. And of course, we'll just offset it a little bit, 30 by 25. And that's just to get it so it's not like over here along the edge. It just like pulls in a little bit. All right, so we've got our size set. So let's see what that looks like. All right, so this is our test label and that's not what we're looking at. But as you can see here, all of these other buttons are kind of just like crammed together, right? So that, that doesn't look right. So the first thing you're probably noticing is, well, we don't have a texture yet. So let's just add the texture because of course we don't know what the sizing is gonna look like until we have our texture to you know fit that button or stretch that button out. So let's go ahead and add those textures. 
Okay, so we've set up the three textures. So this is this the default button state texture. This is when we hover over it and this is when we press. So let's have a look really quick and see where we're at. All right, so you can see the buttons are starting to come together. And when I hover over it, it's not really working, right? Like something's going on. Like it works when I hover around the edge. And as you can see, it's kind of like carried over to all these. When I press it, you can see that it changes to the press image there. So we know it's working, but there's a bug here. Like why is this not showing correctly? Well, the reason for that is we're actually hovering over the button label itself. So this is our like demo button, right? Well, when we populate the map name into that rich text label, it basically hides the mouse input from the hover or pressed actions. Like I can't even press here, right? So let's go ahead and ignore mouse inputs or mouse events from the button label. And what that's gonna look like is we're gonna do button label and we're gonna set a mouse filter and it auto uh, gives us some uh, options here and we're going to just hit ignore. So it's basically the telling the label to ignore the mouse input. Rerun it. As you can see here, it works perfectly. Let me just expand the window. I, I didn't change the window size, so of course it's just not going to really fit very well. But as you can see, when I hover, it's correctly working no matter where I hover over this. And then if I press, it'll press down. And you notice that there's like a little bit of an animation there. That's actually just a side effect of when I was making the three images, right? So the hover image is blue, uh, the normal one is red, and then when you press it's green. I just slightly moved, like the width is 900 by like 150 or something. I don't remember what it was. Yeah, like 900 by 144. Well, all you do is within that 144, just move the texture up or down a little bit uh, to slightly give you that offset effect if that's something that you want. Okay, so let's go back to our scripts. Uh, so we've got the mouse filter working. So we've got all of our uh, button states working. As you can see, our text isn't really conforming to the size that we expected. Uh, so what we need to do is let's just uh, create a font size override. Uh, and what that'll be is if like, I guess if you had a theme, you could set up the buttons theme and set up your font sizes and then just apply the theme to this text label. Well, I'm not using a theme. Uh, so we're just going to override like the default theme. So uh, the way to do that is we just pull up the uh, font size override option here and we have to input the name uh, which is some string name and then the font size which we'll use 60. I think that's what we uh, use down here my, when I set up the demo. Yes, yeah, 60. Uh, so what do we put here for this? Uh, well, this kind of threw me for a minute when I was building out the lobby and matchmaker uh, videos, but if you actually click and drag over this button label, and then you apply that same function, it'll actually auto fill us. It'll give you some examples of what you can actually use. And you can see that that actually maps to these five uh, different font size options. Uh, so we're just gonna override the normal font size. And of course, that's not we're not actually doing that. So let's just copy paste that option here. And that's how I figured out what option to use for that. So that's gonna take our uh, font size and stretch it out to 60 so that we have something that looks realistic and that's exactly what we expect. But you might notice that there's like a little scroll bar here and that's not really what we want. You know, we don't need a scroll bar here. We're not doing anything with it uh, to really have that need. Um, it is kind of a little neat thing. Like if you wanted to be able to scroll inside of a button, you could adjust this. But like if this were like some kind of name, like a map name, and maybe you let your players input the name of their own game, you might want to like cap it to whatever amount of characters would take to fill this up. Maybe it's like 30 or 40 characters. And then, you know, that way, you know, your button sizes would always fit the text. But in the case where you're going to have some overflow, the really the simple way to do this is uh, to clip the contents of the label. So let's just apply that flag really quick. And then if we refresh it, uh, it does clip the contents. Uh, so we know we're not going to have any you know overflow. But if you see here, it's actually still giving us that scroll bar. So let's turn off the scroll bar. Refresh it and you can see there it'll just actually cut off whatever. So that lava world pick uh, is right here. It's pretty long, right? And it cuts it off after the uh, word this and you no longer see that scroll bar. So um, and it needs, it's even happening on our example button at the top here. Let me actually get rid of that. Refresh. So we're working with just our dynamic data. And just so you know, like if you did want to have like a placeholder button at the top for whatever reason, you could just do what I had and just leave this uh, button over here for that like first button in the row. And then the rest of them will just get loaded automatically to the bottom of that list. And then as you can see here, this 
uh, lava world is completely uh, cut off. We don't see any of the scroll bar. So that's a nice way to like handle that if you're uh, allowing clients to input their own uh, text sizes. But I would just recommend limiting it, you know, on the input side so that they can't just put something in bigger and also on the database side. So uh, you're not going to allow them to put something larger than your buttons can handle. Uh, so the last thing we need to do is, well, what happens when we click on it? We want to be able to dynamically set a uh, on click action. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a function and then go ahead and connect these buttons dynamically to it. So uh, let's go down here and add a button action. And all this is going to do is just print out the item ID. Uh, so let's go ahead and connect this button to that function. And this is how we do it dynamically. So when a button is pressed, remember if we go over to our buttons and we click node, you can see there's some options, toggle, press, button up, et cetera. So we're using the pressed one and we're gonna connect it to this function. So let's copy that. And then we're gonna bind it and pass in the item that we're currently looping through. So this item will be passed and for each loop and iteration, it will like bind it to call this function uh, with the given item that it's currently set at. So if we refresh that to test it, you know, let's like check down here in this output. If I hit uh, Eye of the Storm, which is the first one, it'll print out one, two, three, four, which is the ID that we see, and then towers two, three, four, five. So we know it's working correctly, uh, so on and so forth and whatever the ID of the row is, is printed out successfully here. So we're actually able to pass the whole item, the whole actual object and bind that to this uh, button action. So make that button action do whatever you wanna do. Uh, maybe you also wanna call to an RPC here uh, that does something from client to server and that sort of thing. That way you can communicate whatever's happening uh, on the client back to the server. So that, that's what I would recommend and I, I think that's what I was doing in some of my demos. So that pretty much wraps up this uh, demo of how to dynamically load uh, your buttons in a list. Uh, if you want to expand upon this a little bit more, you can create like a factory service for this and just say like request button and you can just like pass in the text that you want to build out and, and it'll just like spit out, uh, you know, a button for you. Um, so that way you don't have this like, you know, code everywhere you want to add a button to a list. So I just recommend like encapsulating this into some object or, you know, helper service class uh, factory uh, to make this a little cleaner. But anyways, uh, that's pretty much it. We've got our test data. Uh, we ran through that test data through this loop. We create the format of the text. Uh, we create a label to hold that text. We set a font size. We set a size of the label. And we also disabled the mouse filter uh, so we can actually like hover over the button and press it and have those actions and uh, textures highlight uh, like as we expect. And then of course we connected our function down here and then we just add it to the list. And that's pretty much it. If you enjoy the video, give it a like and make sure you're subscribed. I've got a lot more on the way. Thanks for watching.